All right, Thomas, thank you for that. And we've got Noe Mahoney joining us, our Borderlands writer, for another update on another company bringing some investment to northern Mexico. Noe, thank you for joining us this morning. Tell us who this next manufacturer is that has started to decide that Mexico is a great place to invest. Yes, good morning. Uh, China-based manufacturer Lingong Machinery Group recently announced that they're investing uh, $5 billion in Mexico to build a manufacturing facility as well as create a uh, industrial park that they hope will attract even more uh, foreign investors uh, to, to the country. Uh, the, manufacture, the manufacturing facility and park will be located uh, near the city of Monterrey, which is about 140 miles south of Laredo, Texas. Uh, Lingong said they hope manufacturers that operate in the automotive and heavy machinery space uh, will invest in the park, and they hope to attract also companies that operate in warehousing and logistics uh, to the space. Now, where are we at in terms of these kind of big, big investors into northern Mexico? Obviously, Tesla came out not too long ago. They're going to put a plant in Monterey. Now, with this one, you've got a $5 billion expansion and, also, as you mentioned, an industrial park. Um, what are we talking about in terms of the large dollar amounts that are going into, into northern Mexico? Yeah, last year, Mexico invested about— uh, um, attracted about $40 billion in foreign direct investment, uh, ma mainly in manufacturing. And this year, they're already ahead of that pace. Uh, we've seen just in the past few weeks a number of announcements, especially from uh, the governor of Nuevo León, a, a man named Samuel Garcia. He's actually in China right now, you know, on a sort of uh, business trip to talk to Chinese companies. And he's made several uh um, announcements just this past week, uh, Kawasaki Heavy Industries uh, announced that they're also building facilities in northern Mexico, as well as uh, Trina Solar, a solar panel producer. So we're starting to see the pace pickup of uh, companies that are announcing these projects in Mexico. So, Noy, of course, we know that Mexico is an absolute hub of truckload activity right now. Trucking is massive coming out of northern Mexico. We've also seen a lot of our U.S. Class 1s start to expand their service offerings from northern Mexico specifically to different spurs in the United States. Of course, the CPKC merger connects now Canada to Mexico. You have efforts from BNSF and from Union Pacific to expand their networks to northern Mexico out towards the southeast and towards the west. Are we looking at with the development of these industrial parks and these kind of multi-use facilities, making those even more attractive options for that connective, I guess, it's almost like connective tissue to grow out of the United States and reach down into Mexico as well, not only for the trucking segment, but for intermodal. Yeah, that's right. We're, as you mentioned, we're starting to see the uh, more um, investments from rail operators uh, who also sort of want to get in on the, a piece of the pie, so to speak, of you know freight moving north and south between Mexico and the U.S. And as you mentioned, uh, Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, and CSX, CSX two Class One railroads, uh, recently filed a petition with federal authorities to allow them to uh, acquire a short line operator uh, that operates about a 150 mile line uh, between Alabama and uh, Mississippi. And they hope by acquiring this short line that it will create a corridor between Mexico, Texas, and the U.S. Southeast, uh, creating, you know, as you mentioned, faster rail and intermodal uh, services for shippers between our two countries. And I should mention that report uh, came from our colleague, uh, Joanna Marsh, uh, the story about the rail operators. So, Noah, you mentioned Samuel Garcia going over to China and trying to recruit more businesses coming over. Obviously, Mexico, in terms of those state governors, knows what they're dealing with. They've got a gold mine of opportunity that uh, they that it looks like they hope China can can uh, can capitalize on there as well. As you look at it. These, uh, we've talked about this before in the fact that Mexico is obviously a great, great uh, investment opportunity for so many people, but at the same time, having governments that may not be able to manage what may be coming in. How active are uh, people like Samuel Garcia and maybe others, are they, are they full out going over and saying, look, we're here, go, come and invest? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Um, and, you know, 
like here in the U.S., how we have states such as you know Texas and Oklahoma and others competing for economic you know, investments, that seems to be the case also in Mexico, where you have this, like you mentioned, the governor of the Nuevo León, Samuel Garcia in China, in China right now, trying to draw investors. I've, I've read of other uh, governors from, you know, the st different states in Mexico also sort of doing the same thing. Um, so they're sort of competing for all these uh, investments. And it'll be interesting to see how that play out. It's one of the questions I have is, uh, you know, you have all these major manufacturers that you want to come to your state or region, and hopefully they have the infrastructure, the, you know, electricity capabilities, the water needed to, you know, help all, to help all these uh, big projects come online. So to me, one of the questions is, uh, hopefully they can build the infrastructure fast enough. No, and one of the other questions with that, too, is, of course, the relationship between the U.S. dollar and the Mexican peso. And we had seen a couple stories written on this about how that value was was weakening a little bit. And it kind of led to some issues on the Mexican side of things, of course. You know, labor is not being paid as much to the dollar amount that they were getting before. Is that something that we're going to have to watch out for, too, is maybe this kind of the peso to the dollar kind of seeing a little bit of an equalization or getting closer to equilibrium and that may be taking Mexico from a super cheap option to a not so cheap option. Yeah, that's a great point. And that's something that trade operators have been watching very closely, especially this year. I know for a brief period, the peso was at, uh, I, th I believe it was uh, 17 pesos to one US dollar, which is one of the highest uh, one of the highest places the peso has ever been. So it will be interesting going forward uh, if the peso keeps appreciating, you know, above 17 or even higher, that reduces the sort of uh, cost effectiveness of Mexican labor. And that could play a part in, you know, trade volumes and stuff. I know trade operators want to see the peso down and around the, you know, the 15 to 16, you know, pesos to the one U.S. dollar. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out uh, this year and next year. We've got about 30 seconds left here, Noy, as you look at it. Uh, are there any other deterrents besides that economic impact that may kind of slow this thing down a little bit? Now we've talked a little bit about cartel activity and that being a concern, but obviously now hopefully this is just a temporary problem, but the problem, but the issues at the border with uh, so many uh, backups there as well. Um, any other deterrents that may slow things, this thing down, or does this look to be full speed ahead as far as Mexico is concerned? Well, you know, as you mentioned, there's cargo theft, there's the migrant situation where you have all these migrants moving through Mexico to try to get to the U.S.-Mexico border. And we've already seen that that can have an effect on cross-border trade, especially when, you know, you have the state of Texas, you know, implementing these enhanced inspections. So there's a lot of moving parts. And another moving part that could be coming up in the horizon is the Mexican presidential election. It'll be interesting to see who the next president will be and what their policies on international trade will be. It's feeling like you you got to try to balance a seesaw that can go in any particular different direction. Noy, thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right, let's head back over to the wall for our next check of weather with Kaylee.